Long time no see. It's Michael from Loser Loser, and I know I said I wasn't going to just disappear off the face of the planet, but things don't always go as planned. To more of the subject of this video, uh, I received a really weird email. Neo Cheese, you're invited to Riot HQ to celebrate League's 10 year anniversary. I was like, mm, this sounds a lot like a scam. <laughs> so I actually opened up a support ticket with Riot to make sure it was real before anything else. Like I really wanted RSVP and hoped that it was real and it was. I immediately just started freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. They're, they're inviting me out to LA. They're going to fly me out there and put me up in a hotel just so I can participate in whatever this 10 year anniversary stuff is. I, I couldn't believe it. Even though support confirmed to me, they were like, yeah, this is real. You're gonna totally go on this trip. I was still going, am I gonna go on this trip? Uh, I found out that League had only invited 100 people total to come out to LA for this event. That blew my mind. Uh, I was the only person from Kentucky that ended up at that event. I don't normally feel like video games or my playing video games really gets me very much other than, you know, I, I enjoy it. I, I take personal pleasure in playing video games, but that was the first time. It was like when they told me it was a hundred people, I was like, oh my gosh, this somehow earned me something. <laughs> Regardless, the time eventually came, I requested off work and I hopped on an airplane to, to fly out to LA. You know, I went to sleep that night. I was just beat from flying. But I got up the next day and went to breakfast. They they kind of had like a special side room at the hotel that they took us to. Uh, they they gave us these little swag bags that had all kinds of different stuff in them, including these Timo hats. Look at all of these feeders. All these people will be feeding their legs. They were kind of using that to keep track of us. And we had like ID badges and everything. They threw us all on a bus and they were actually calling us out by summoner name. Yo. <laughs> There were some pretty funny ones on there. Made it to the Riot Games headquarters. It was hard to tell how big it was at first. I thought it was just kind of this one building, this, this complex. I've got this in this photo right here. But it was way bigger than that. It spanned across the street. Like they had multiple huge buildings that they had offices running all over the place. They walked us through the main building's front doors and that was a really cool experience. Check this out. <laughs> Thank you, Riot Games. I just felt very, very appreciated, and it was neat to be able to meet the people who helped make my favorite game a reality. So they walked us around the facility, showed us all kinds of things. They had like a, a, a PC cafe where they play stuff. The reason they do that is because they try to get the feel of what it's like to be playing inside of a PC cafe versus like playing at home. And they actually make some of their design choices based off of that. They have an awesome, Statue of Lucian uh, shooting out some Shadow Isles baddies. Uh, they had a little Tino inside one of the other rooms and I just thought, hey, I need a picture with Tino because I currently look a lot like Tino. They also had in that same room a Zig statue. That one was really, really cool because it had all kinds of light effects, like the fuses would flicker and they had a little section where people were drawing some chalk art in the wall. I thought that was pretty cool. They brought us into the Bilgewater Brew Cafe. It was very well themed. It actually looked like you were walking into Bilgewater from League of Legends, you know, the pirate kind of themed area. They also had some very cool cosplayers running around. Uh, Mecha Kha'Zix was very technically well done. The Jinx cosplay was also very well done. Uh, they actually had a little Jinx tattoo shop while we were there, and all that really came down to was they had some washable tattoos that you could put on your arms or whatever throughout the day. Uh, my riot buddy, so they introduced me to a riot buddy at the beginning of the day that kind of was like my personal guide, walked me around. Um, he actually put it on his face <laughs> for kicks for the day. Um, that actually reminds me too, when we went in there, uh, after we kind of walked through the main area, they introduced us to the the main people, uh, Brandon and Mark, they, the creators of the game, and they had a short little Q&A session with us. They didn't discuss anything that is going to, you're not gonna learn anything new from me talking about anything they talked about. 
So I'll probably leave that alone. But they had that rider buddy in there and they had these really cool posters. And on the one side of the poster was just like the cool League of Legends 10 year anniversary event logo. And on the other side, uh, my rioter had drawn what he thought my username meant or kind of looked like. It's got like this, this cheese man with guns. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty funny uh, for Neo Cheese. So it was a good interpretation. I just appreciated the effort he put into it. Changing subjects, as we continued going through the facility, they had this Twitch bot that was running around. It was a robot that was actually controlled by Twitch users. And what they could do is inside of chat, tell it to go forward or left or right. Uh, some people, uh, of course, want to troll and do silly things. There were lots of people like, kill, 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 kill. But uh, I don't think it was programmed for that, so I didn't do any of that. Um, really sad, really, really sad. I actually went up and took a selfie with it. Another cool statue that was done. These statues, by the way, were all done by the same artist. This one was Annie and Tibbers, and that one was very impressive. There was just a whole bunch of detail on it. It was a huge statue. There was also this Thresh statue, and this statue was actually a cosplay at one point, and I believe there's probably video floating around that shows off the cosplay. It was very, very cool. One of the coolest things that happened to me, they created a mural uh, called Summoners of Distinction, and this is kind of like in their cafeteria area. The gist of it is that they were getting people who have been playing for a long time, have a good attitude, clever summoner name. Um, they also had a few people like, they had double lift on there, people who have contributed to the community in some significant form. Among all these names, it was just a few hundred names, maybe two, two or three hundred names. Um, my summoner name was on that list. And that knocked my socks off. Like I've all I my goal for playing this game was just to play it because I enjoyed it. It's one of my hobbies. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love playing League of Legends. I did not expect that the creators of League of Legends were going to take my name and put it on the wall at their company headquarters. That wasn't even in the back of my mind at all. It's hard to describe, but just lots of proud feelings of I don't know. You understand. It was cool. It was cool. That's all I'm trying to say, okay? So they took us to the LCS arena. And inside there, uh, it was really cool. It's where all the pro teams play their games. They announced all kinds of new stuff coming down pipeline, Riot Games pipeline. And some of the stuff I'm really excited for, they have a collectible card game coming out called Legends of Runeterra. I actually have access to the pre-alpha, and I may, I may try to stream it some. I don't know yet. I'm either going to stream it or record some videos. Either way, it's only going to be available for a couple more days. It's a very limited release. Uh, and then it's going to go away for a bit, I suppose, for them to implement some new stuff based off of the data that they're gathering. Another thing that they are going to release is a fighting game. Um, this one has kind of been talked about for a little while, but we kind of have more some, some official uh, word from Riot now that it is coming. Another thing coming out, the thing that I may be most excited for is the thing that has some of the least information about it so far. There's this top-down exploration focused game that kind of lets you run around Runeterra and so far all I've seen are just really pretty animations from Blitzcrank and Ezreal and I'm still really hopeful because you know, League has all this lore that they've been sitting on and that they've changed over and over again as characters get reworked and all this over the years. I've never paid that much close attention to it just because it has zero effect on the gameplay. <laughs> but that said, doesn't mean I don't want lore. I just want a better way to consume it. You know, one of my pet peeves is when you're playing a video game and the main way that they communicate this story or the subplot to you is by finding books or pieces of paper. That's like, all right, I'm going to have to sit down and read for five to ten minutes to find out more about the history of the stupid world that you built. I want it to feel more natural. It's revealed to you via experiencing it. So, like, rather than being told, hey, there's a, a glacial area up here where everything's really icy and there's this person named Lissandra. Rather than reading about all of that, why not go there and find an icy, you know, the icy Freljord, meet Lissandra and experience that. That would be so cool. That's what I'm, I'm most hopeful for that because I think that could be one of the deeper League of Legends or just Terra lore experiences. A shooter. <laughs> that one was kind of a surprise to everybody. I'm not a huge shooter fan, 
but uh, it looks kind of interesting. This one looks kind of like a mixture between, I'd say, if I had to pick two, like Overwatch and CSGO. So kind of a precision shooter, but also still maintaining classes and character, like it's a character-based precision shooter. They're going to be doing something with that. Looks kind of cool. It's not necessarily set in Runeterra. It's not necessarily League of Legends characters. It could be. They just haven't given us very much information about it at this point. One of the other things that I'm really excited about, though, uh, they're coming out with an animated series at some point. My wife and I love to sit down and watch anime together, so this is, like, right up our alley. And this could also be a really cool way to absorb, like, League of Legends lore stuff. You know, they kind of ended with some confetti and stuff, just like a big celebration and we all kind of ran off to go our separate ways and go do different things so uh and i really appreciate the experience that riot games league of legends uh provided for me what a what, what a whirlwind um thanks again i really hope that you all enjoyed watching this video if you did you know what to do you can like you can comment and you can subscribe or you can go watch some of my other videos. Uh, I've got a little bit of a backlog, but I'm hoping to release some more stuff, including some Legends of Runeterra stuff very soon. So maybe some new content for you to watch as well as the old content. Um, additionally, if you have anything that you'd like to say, anything you thought was particularly cool about Riot Headquarters, uh, leave that below. Or um, if you're particularly excited about any of the announced releases coming out, uh, discuss it down there. I'll ha I'm happy to talk about it with you. Um, I'm a little spoiled because I got to go chat with rioters for riot rioters as well as uh, other people who play League for a couple days. Uh, just about all this stuff. So I'm feeling a little bit of that drought now um, <laughs> after having been around all those people. But yeah, uh, feel free to talk about it below, and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.